It's a pleasure to be here and thank you for the introduction. So I'm talking about promises and challenges of social innovation in health in Uganda, drawing specifically from research that we have conducted, uh, myself and other colleagues at Makere University School of Public Health. To set us going, um, Uganda really is a, a landlocked country in the east of Africa. I hope we can move from the Pacific and into Africa now. I would like to ask you a question as we start. Reflect upon this question and we'll answer it by the end of the talk. My question to you is, do you think that it's possible to increase access to good quality health care for everyone in a poor country like Uganda? This is a low-income country with a gross domestic product per capita of 600 compared to 3,000 in the Philippines and 50,000 United States dollars in the United States of America. So it's, um, that's, that's the situation. And so many people will say that it is really difficult to in, increase access to care for everyone in such a setting because of little money available for health care, um, severe shortage of health workers, lack of medicines, drugs, and technologies. In fact, uh, around 300 children die every single day in Uganda due to preventable causes. Malaria, pneumonia, diarrhea, and neonatal causes. Even around 20 mothers die daily. So it's hard to imagine how to improve uh, access to care and quality of care. But we need to think more creatively and more innovatively. So let's think beyond, uh, beyond the, the fears or the imagination that it might, it's not possible. Uh, already these advances in health and medicine and innovation and technology and genomic ther uh, uh, um, uh, uh, therapy in the world today. Even just for the simple uh, preventable diseases I've been talking about, malaria, pneumonia, and diarrhea, there is good quality of medicines today that exist, even the appropriate diagnostics. The problem is that these do not get to the people that need them most. In addition, we have uh, overlooked the capability of these communities to participate, to understand their own problems and to, and to, and to intervene fully. We have also not funded and not uh, improved the capacity of these communities to actually um, utilize the local solutions that are happening in small pockets here and there. So I'm going to um, take you through a couple of examples that we've, uh, we have, uh, how we have uh, innovated in delivery of healthcare and how we have uh, utilized co our community stakeholders to work together and, uh, and uh, improve care and access to care for children. On to the uh, Drug Shop Integrated Management of Childhood Illnesses Project, which started off as a pilot program in uh, uh, a few districts in the rural Uganda, where we wanted to uh, understand the feasibility and effectiveness of introducing uh, appropriate treatments and diagnostics within a private drug shop uh, for management of childhood illnesses. So I'll take you through how we went, how we did this. There is this. Uh, strategy called Integrated Community Case Management of Malaria, Pneumonia, and Diarrhea. And it is uh, uh, supported and, uh, and uh, utilized by community health workers with uh, support and funding from the World Health Organization and, and UNICEF. So public sector community health workers are trained to utilize appropriate diagnostics for malaria treatments and, and the appropriate medication at missing in combination therapy, and also for pneumonia to account respiratory rate of children with symptoms of cough and fever to classify and treat appropriately. So um, those are the diagnostics used and appropriate treatment, also for diarrhea, oral rehydration, salts and zinc. Now, my research group has been looking at how to improve quality of care and access to care and utilizing this integrated community case management strategy with public sector community health workers. However, over the years, uh, 10 and 15 years back, we always find from the community-based surveys that we do that children actually seek care, about half of all children seek care, 
at a small private drug shop like the one on the screen. Um, and these are just shops selling medicines on a retail basis. So we were working in the public sector, and yet within the private sector, half of the children were not getting appropriate diagnostics and not getting uh, the medications that they needed on time. The natural next step for us was to uh, explore how to work with these small private units, uh, drug, uh, units to provide appropriate drugs, diagnostics, and treatments to children who were seeking care there. This was for research and also for public uh, implementation, really. But nobody knew how to do this. There was a lot of, 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 of unknowns and challenges that, we, uh, that we, we faced us at the beginning. First of all, we were not sure these drug uh, shop operators would be interested in adding diagnostics to the, the menu of, of things that they provide. And uh, that would they be interested in modifying their, their, their shop to accommodate uh, such diagnostics. In addition, um, utilizing of diagnostics at that level, was there was no policy around it, and, and also provision of antibiotics at that level. So the regulator, the National Drug Authority, uh, needed to be brought on board along with the, the health worker, uh, the Ministry of Health uh, policy makers, along with the drug providers, to sit at one table and understand the importance of, of having these uh, drugs and diagnostics at, at the private drug shop. Um, just getting all of us together, understanding our research interests, the research approach, and how we should do this, in itself was, was hard enough, but we were able to get everybody to understand and get all the ethical uh, clearances and, uh, and uh, National Drug Authority clearance that we needed. So that was one. In addition, just taking this integrated community case management strategy, an existing uh, well-known and tested uh, approach to increase uh, access to pro uh, diagnostics and, and care, taking it from a public sector and, and uh, testing it into the private sector was also innovative uh, in itself. What did we find when we did that? In fact, all children who had fever, more than 97%, all had, uh, within the private drug shops, received diagnostic testing. Um, we did this using a, a, a comparative study designs, and we found that uh, there was four times better management of um, malaria with appropriate diagnostics and treatments in the intervention district uh, drug shops compared to, to the comparison districts. 13 times better management of diarrhea symptoms with appropriate oral rehydration salts and zinc in intervention areas compared to comparison. Um, and also management of pneumonia was better in the intervention area. So literally we exponentially improved quality of care and access to diagnostics and, and, and appropriate treatments in these children. So that's the innovation and this is what we've been, we've been recognized for over um, and received various awards. Um, in addition, this work has then informed uh, uh, a lot of policies, locally and global recommendations, where we have informed the National Ministry of Health is uh, test and treat policy for malaria, and diagnostic, malaria diagnostic tests can be available now at the level of the drug shop. Additional recommendations include using the integrated community case management strategy also in the private sector to improve case management and particularly to ensure integration from, uh, with clinical health systems and community components to have all these work together in both the public and private sector. Um, I thought to give you a quick a second example from uh, my colleagues based also at the School of Public Health just to show how multi-sectoral action uh, and utilizing all community stakeholders can work. Uh, we, uh, in a project on maternal and neonatal implementation for equitable uh, systems. And this publication is, uh, is open and uh, 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 openly accessible. But they talk about how they utilize a, a participatory action research method to unlock capabilities of, 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 of communities. And their question of biggest interest was how to improve maternal and child health outcomes. Um, in rural settings, and they utilize all the stakeholders that are, are engaged in maternal and child health, the mothers themselves, and women of re reproductive health, families, husbands, 
even the transporters that take, uh, that take um, mothers to hospitals, are saving groups where families um, save money for whatever purposes. And utilize all this to diagnose um, the community problems that people have with, with uh, uh, in, in maternal and child health, which is accessing transport and uh, uh, um, commodities that are required for delivery. So having all the stakeholders together, improving their capabilities and utilizing all the community resources that, they, that exist to diagnose problems, to take action and to actually learn in a cyclical manner and improve the systems. Um, this is another good example of, 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 a, pro, of a program that uh, utilized uh, community approaches well. And they were able to improve knowledge, improve understanding on maternal and child health issues, even improve by about 10% um, uh, health facility delivery in intervention areas compared to the comparison areas. So back to a few challenges that we face is that there is no clear funding for such work. This is more in relation, there's no like research funding for social innovation research uh, or funding for even such uh, community uh, engagement. And so that's a, that could be improved. But also when we start to engage different stakeholders and communities, then we realize that um, we need stronger support supervision, we need quality improvement cycles that need to be factored into the programs that we, that we, we run. So, back to my original question. Based on what we've discussed and what you're thinking, do you think it's possible to increase access to good quality healthcare for everyone in a poor country? Yeah. And more yeses now, yes, and that's how I feel. Um, however, not one sector or not one stakeholder will be able to do it alone. We will need to bring together the communities themselves, implementers, policy makers, researchers, funders, in order to, um, to improve these uh, uh, society or intractable problems that we face. Thank you very much.